Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chris from Bite Size Tech and today we're going to look at the Sharp Aquos R Compact. Now, if you follow tech closely, you might already know that this phone along with the larger brother Sharp Aquos R is actually the first phone in the world to be released with a 120Hz high refresh rate panel. Yes, yes, you might think that the Razer phone is the first, but this is actually the first. In fact, this phone was released in July of 2017, which is 5 months earlier than the first generation Razer phone, which was released in November of 2017. So, obviously, the main selling point of this phone is that high refresh rate panel. And in fact, that 120Hz refresh rate panel is still very rare now, which is bizarre because it has exactly been 3 years from when it was first released, right? Even $1,000 flagship phones today like the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II does not come with this feature. Well, I know that there are some $1,000 phones with this feature already, but aside from the gaming-centric phones and the Samsung S20 series, other flagships like the Huawei P40 Pro and Google Pixel 4 only comes with a 90Hz refresh rate panel, which is still not as good as the 120Hz refresh rate panel that this comes with. Now, that combined the fact that this phone is only selling for 60 US dollars is very compelling for me, and that's why I purchased one for myself. So, after using it for about a month now, I want to share with you guys my thoughts on this phone. And for the benefit of you who are already bored, the summary is that this phone is a steal and you should buy it if you are on a budget or don't really need the best of the best that you can get in the smartphone market. So if you are interested to find out more about it, stick till the end of the video to find out why. First, let's talk about the packaging or the lack thereof. This phone was only released in Japan. And that is why the set that I got today is from AU, an operator in Japan. As far as I know, these are not selling new anymore, so I did not get the original box and accessories from the seller. In fact, it was shipped with only the phone, but for $60, I am not complaining. Next, let's look at the build quality of this phone. And it is really good in my opinion. You get a traditional glass sandwich and aluminium build, which feels nice and premium. In fact, I really like the attention to detail such as the chamfered edges, which makes the phone feel even more premium. Now the phone is a little thick at 94mm, and as you can see here, it is thicker than many phones out there including my iPhone 8. But it is not chunky by any means. In fact, it feels good in the hand. I think it is because the phone is actually narrow, narrower than even the small iPhone 8 and it is also slightly shorter. Which is nice because you actually get a 4.9 inch display with that small form factor which is already bigger than the 4.7 inch that you get with the iPhone 8. And as for the weight, it weighs just about the same as the iPhone 8 at 140 grams. So as for the design, in the front you get a nice teardrop notch display with very small bezels around it except at the bottom obviously. And I would like to point out that this design is brilliant because they were able to fit both a speakerphone and a light sensor despite the small bezel at the top. The large bezel at the bottom houses the front fingerprint scanner which doubles as a navigation function. A trademark for Aquos R models even up to today. I think overall this teardrop display makes it look very up to date despite the fact that this phone is already 3 years old. One thing to note is that the front speaker is only activated during calls and is not a dual speaker setup. In the back of the phone, you got a nicely polished glass back, 
which is very prone to fingerprints. At the top, you get a nice and flush camera module along with a flash. And then the Aquos logo in the middle and a few other logos below it. At the bottom, you get a USB-C charger, a decent speaker, and a bottom-facing microphone. And thank God for that USB-C charger. At the left side, you get a SIM tray slot which houses the nano SIM card and a micro SD card slot. No, that is not the hybrid slot that you get with phones today, so you can only use one SIM card at a time. At the right side, you get a volume up and down button and a power button. And finally at the top, you get a 3.5mm headphone jack and a secondary microphone. Now, there are antenna lines at the bottom and the top, but they don't look obtrusive and blends really well with the painted aluminum. So overall, I would say that you get a really nice build quality, which does look and feel premium. But do note that the condition of the phone may vary depending on which store you get the phone from. I opted for the grade A set, and I still see many micro scratches at the bottom and the front of the glass surface. So the next point I would like to cover is that front display. After all, the display is what we interact with all the time, right? And here, the display is made by Sharp themselves. And as you know, Sharp is well known for their televisions, just like Sony and Samsung. So the phone does have a very nice screen. The panel on this display is an IPS EXO high refresh rate panel, which has a 1080p resolution. And that works out to be 470 pixels per inch. So this display is very sharp, no pun intended. And it is actually even sharper than the iPhone 8, which has a 326 pixels per inch. The brightness of the screen maxes out at 480 nits, which is short of the 630 nits display of the iPhone. But it is still reasonably bright for a 3 year old phone, and it is very usable under bright sunlight. So the star of the show here is the high refresh rate panel, and that is what sets it apart. It is an amazing experience, and you really feel the difference when you start using it. Although it is no flagship, this display makes it feel like a flagship. The phone flies through the home screen, the app drawer, social media apps, and light games. And it is so satisfying. I can't really show you though through the video because my camera is capped at 60 fps. But you have to really try to understand. Some people might say that this feature is just a gimmick. But I do think that this actually does contribute to how it makes you feel because flagship phones that do come with this feature is way more expensive. So to match up to that high refresh rate panel, you obviously need a performance that can keep up, right? And yes, this phone comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660, paired with a 3 gigs of RAM. Although 3 gig of RAM is not much, the CPU used to be an upper mid-range chipset three years ago, and for the most part, it actually delivers. In fact, its performance is above that of a Snapdragon 821, which is a flagship chipset, and is almost on par as the Snapdragon 835, according to Versus.com. It means that this chipset still outperforms many new budget chipsets today, especially those which are selling at this price point. Even in real-world use, expect it to be able to run anything that you throw at it. Like I said, it flies through day-to-day -day tasks like YouTube and social media. These will all run in 120Hz refresh rate, as long as your app supports it. You can even toggle the high refresh rate on individual apps if you don't think that it is worth it and to save some battery life through the built-in app, but don't expect it to run heavy games at that 120Hz refresh rate. If you want to fully utilize that 
refresh rate, you must lower the graphics settings and make sure to run it only on games that supports high refresh rate. Games like PUBG will run smoothly with no hiccup or throttling at extended gameplay. Again, granted that you run it on the lowest settings. So in summary, the performance is good in today's standards and it is in fact very good for the price. But given the age of the chipset, don't expect it to be completely lag free. You will encounter some stutter occasionally because of that 3 gigs of RAM. So the software is where this phone starts to look bad. The phone just come with Android 9.0 and it is running the December 2019 security update. But given the age of the phone, I don't think that it will receive any more software updates at all. So please stay away if that bothers you. On top of this Android 9, the phone is pretty much running stock Android. But there are loads of bloatware and manufacturer apps. So I'd say the software is actually very usable. But just remember to disable the bloatware and you should be good to go. The camera of the phone is so-so. Given how much the camera technology have improved over the past three years, you should not be expecting this camera to keep up with today's budget offerings. The phone comes with a 16 megapixel camera which is fine and is capable of shooting 1080p videos up to 30 frames per second. It will probably fulfill your occasional need to capture special moments, but if you are a heavy camera user, this phone is not for you. At the front, there is an 8 megapixel camera, which is good enough for the occasional video calls and selfies. Both cameras perform poorly in dark situations. I will let the photos speak for themselves. The built-in speaker is decent for media consumption. It gets loud enough and it does not distort, but it is a little tiny and does not churn out enough bass. The same story goes for the mic. It is definitely usable, but it is nothing special. The battery is a non-removable 2500 mAh battery, which is very small in today's standard especially if you compare it to those entry-level Samsung smartphones which houses 4000 mAh batteries. And in real-world use, I am able to get only 5 hours of screen on time, but it should last you through the whole day if you're not a heavy gamer. The performance is not bad actually, considering that the screen is a 120Hz refresh rate screen. For other quirks and features, the phone does have NFC, which I do appreciate since many budget devices do not have. So you can confidently bring it to use for commuting and cashless payments. So to wrap up, I really like this phone because it is able to provide so much at just 60 US dollars. I like the screen, I like the build quality and form factor. I like the performance, but everything else falls flat. But considering that this phone is only 60 US dollars, we should not even be comparing it to today's budget offerings, which usually starts at about 100 US dollars. And for those reasons, I can confidently recommend this phone to you guys who want a high refresh rate display for affordable price. You guys who are tight on budget, you guys who want to give your elderly parents something inexpensive to use, you guys who are thinking of a phone to temporarily give your kids and finally you guys who just want the small form factor. So guys, please refer to the description below for a link to where I got this amazing deal from and leave a like and subscribe if you like my content. Also leave a comment below if you guys want me to cover another device.
and thank you for watching. Peace out.